What are we going to call this one? Troy One? Sure. Good morning. I'm here with Jake Beeman from Apis Rescue, and we're going to check some hives today. All I got to do is video, unless he makes me do something else. I'll try to do all. I'll try to do all the handiwork. Leave your hands free. <laughs> I get my wife out here to record me sometimes. Yeah, well, and it makes a lot better video when you can get up close to stuff. But. It does. Like I have the problem where I'll record videos, and you know, if you're okay with the bird's eye view from the tripod. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You get the tripod in a certain spot. Yeah, they're a lot of propolis. Also, the, all these lids are a little bit towards the end of their life. Yeah, too. probably pretty close. Actually, I've had them a long time. We'll do something a little earlier. One of the things uh, we do is we actually use this. This is a color code system. Uh -huh. And we're actually trying to for identify the, the, the bee appearances. Because we know there's Oh, for the bees. Huh. And like, if you look in here, oh, where do you go? Like that one's a lot blacker than your other ones are. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that usually indicates... We say color and stuff indicates subspecies. Uh, don't really know. Different exactly. daddy? Exactly. Could be. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I attribute it to. Uh, that's, different that's, daddy. That's the expectation for sure. Uh, but I'll try to gauge the colors using this. Yeah. This is the Munsell system. Cool. And what Munsell did is he realized colors exist on a spectrum. Like a lot of the color charts you'll see out there don't really figure this out. There it is right there. You have to have hue and density and overall brightness of the uh, thing to get an actual accurate color measurement. And of course, I lost my pencil again. There it is. <laughs> I do the same thing when I'm building things. Yep. This is a pencil and tape measure. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. 2.5. Why? 6.5. Three. And that's for the that's for the light band. The, the, the light is band. Oh, okay. So you're looking at the light band. Right there. It's between these two points. Yeah. Gotcha. That lightest band. It's a little yellow, a little orange. Cool. Uh, and they've got a lot of orange in the middle of their backs. Most of them do. And the orange, probably on this card. Any kind of hassle the bees a little. <laughs> Try, trying to trying to find out which one's supposed to be. Yeah, it's, it's like you say, they all are different colors. They a lot of different are. colors in there. They are. Do you find that dark bees do better than lighter colored bees? In my experience in our area, sort of. And the reason why I say sort of, oh my God, I'm in here this time. Uh, I are five, five, eight. The the really bright, you know, classic Italian bees uh, are more of a yellow or a gold color. And I say classic Italian, they're not necessarily Italian because uh, um, there's a lot of, oh, what's it called? Caucasian stock. So yeah. it's Italian. And we have a lot of that here. It's one of those things that's only starting to show up on the data because you have to know where to look for it. Yeah. Uh, and like if you look in the bee catalog, you're not gonna find Caucasians for sale. <laughs> but they're still here. Cause we, and we made thousands of them uh, at the, at one point our country had a nationwide apiarist. Yeah. And they created thousands of those Caucasian queens and shipped them all throughout the United States. And that's still showing up in the data. I had Caucasian when I had when I was up to fifty before. I had most of them were Caucasian. Yeah, well, uh, they were a dark, dark bee, and they made a lot of propolis. Exactly. Uh, and, and everybody uh, said at the time when I had them that it was propolis was bad. Now everything's turned around, and everybody wants all that propolis. But it, man, it was a pain in the butt to get them lids off. Oh, I'm sure. Everything out. I'm sure. A little bit of high beetles, nothing crazy. Everybody looks healthy. I have seen some uh, deformed wing virus in some of them. Okay, I've noticed it's like in years past. Would you say this propolis was put in here by this hive, or did this come with the box? No, it was definitely put in there by them. Okay. That box was clean. That actually borders on curtaining. 
that's that's a lot of propolis you do. yeah they're and they're all that bad or worse yeah well, most I, of them i think that's one of the best signs you have for local bees in our area because the commercial stuff doesn't do this yeah. it will not propolize in like that it's definitely bad okay I'm probably, I'm going to look in here, make sure it's not brooding it, but I'm probably going to go down pretty fast. Okay. Uh, is this a nine framer? It is. Yep. I mean, they don't need to slide frames around first. I can just go straight in. Straight in the middle. And that was, it probably says on that lid when it was put on, it just put on for fall flow. They was been busy last week or so. Uh, there's a lot of wing stem in bloom. There's a snake, snake root is in bloom. Yeah, look at that there. They're falling on honey for your nectar. Oh, cool, they so they're more in there than I thought they would. Uh, they're doing all right. Like, uh, I was in some hives a week ago. And classic double deeps with the, the supers put back on so they dry them out. And I go to weigh them. And it's 160 pounds. Nice. Like it usually high around here is about 60 or 70 this time of year. If we're having one of our normal dry years before the flow comes back, I'm going to try not to get in that corner. Are uh, you trying not to use smoke on them? Or? I, I'm using a, as little as I have okay. to. I'm pretty conservative with the smoke when I can be. Because if you use too much, you can piss them off. <laughs> uh, and you can end up like if I use a bunch of smoke on that top box I just shoved all the bees down here yeah which means I'd have Mess. a lot more bees to deal with down here yeah I'm just gonna see if there's anything that sticks out they are responding to my breath a bit I see that and that's actually one of the things we assess for um, cool someone at one point and just because they responded so much I will put a little smoke uh, at one point, someone, it came out that, you know, uh, Africanized bees are the ones that run from you when you breathe on them. No one's actually really? proven that shit. Uh, so it might be another beekeeping old wives tale. Uh, it might be legitimate. And until we actually run some tests and try to quantify it, we really don't know. The hives in my yard, like they literally don't respond to you blowing on them. Oh, really? Uh, they'll, they'll move out of the way with the wind on their back, but they don't kind of scatter. And some hives, they kind of tranquilly buzz up at you. Oh, I didn't realize this was a medium. Yeah, I've got medium. The blue ones are mediums and the pink ones are shallow. Oh, oh gracious. The joys of shallow and mediums in the same yeah. spot. I always said I would never have two different you know the two different i never had mediums i had all shallows and oh then, yeah of course i bought somebody else yeah well also out that had mediums what are you gonna do throw them away yeah and, well, also at this point you know who's making shallows uh, <laughs> you know if you want to if you want to use wax foundation forever uh there, there is one manufacturer that makes uh, oh they don't make the plastic in the shallow there's there's only one that i know of that makes plastic oh i didn't shallow. even realize that uh, and so, that, that's a big hang up to me just because plastic is so much faster. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've only been using plastic since y'all. Since we showed you the light? Well, I've used it so many times once in the past. And good, it's, once you've experienced good plastic, it's a whole yeah, different world. Yeah, whole, it is different. Because uh, I remember I got some from a certain distributor in Kentucky. Uh, and I got it because I had ran out of room in the hive. I needed supers, so I went and bought supers that I could assemble in the back of my truck and throw in the hive while I was there. And, oh, we got a drone. How about that? We haven't seen many drones this late in the year. Some, some yeah, have I've got some, some hives that's got them and some hives that's yeah. not. Yeah, and like, you come here. Yeah, the, his colors are more or less the same as your workers, so I'm not yeah. gonna color grade them. Uh, but most of the hives have gotten rid of their drones. I say most. There's some else to hold on to. But this one'd be decent for a wash. Just because it's got all the open brood on it. So we might take the wash from this and one more just because a lot of times these, these mediums just don't have enough bees on them. Yeah. You do half a cup, I guess. Yeah. Get them out of this little corner, and make sure there's not a queen in there. If 
probably all in there because there's probably a corner of honey that they're all reading. Yeah, they're all trying to eat that honey. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay. I'm going to park them here on the ground. Hope you're not a Don beekeeper. I can put stuff on the ground. That's fine. <laughs> it is fine. It's a lot of times you just put... Don, don't like you putting them on the ground? Oh, Lord, no. Lord, no. <laughs> well, he's got all that aggregate in his apiary. Oh, yeah. And it gets stuck. Yeah. Oh, gracious. Speaking of stuff. <laughs> The glue, huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the the rocks get stuck on the box. So when you try to put the box on the hive, it's all sitting cattywampus. With, uh, with it's the, got rocks all in it. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, with a nice B-size space. Uh, There's positives and negatives to everything you do. Exactly. I like an apiary. I can just chuck stuff on the ground there. Uh, well, how about that? There's some cat That's breeze. a great pattern right there. Especially for not feeding or anything else. You got a second drone. That might have been the drone I threw back in. Make sure you're looking great. Okay, I'm gonna get my wash stuff ready. I think I already loosened You may hold that or no? Nah, I'll be fine. Let's see how I slap this together. One. worn <laughs> dish tub from the Dollar General or this is a Dollar Tree purchase even. I, I haven't mic checked any of them so I'm anxious to see what they yeah. get. Yeah well you know we were in another guy's apiary. I'll leave his name out because <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't want everyone to know about it but he's he's pretty good. I did not get stung there I just squished a bee. Uh, uh, he's pretty good about treating. Yeah. And you know two out of three hives had one mite zero mites. Uh, one of them had 26. Oh. Uh, and you know that that hive got the same protocols everyone else did. It should have been out of one or a zero. Uh. Uh, but they got into something, uh, and I think that's one of those things we don't it's, when pay I, enough attention to. They get into stuff and they bring it back. I um, I lost all those bees because I went treatment free. So when I started back, yeah, I'm gonna treat. Yes. But my goal was when I first started, my goal was to just treat the ones that's needed, that need to be treated. Yes. And the one, but you can't go by that. I mean, you can, but it's it's one of those, and it's it's what I did for years. I'd wash everybody and treat accordingly. And with what I was doing, about half my colonies would be beneath two percent, and half would be above two percent. But usually, they were just barely above two percent. Well, I, I had started wondering if I'm over treating them. Yeah. Because there's, there's every treatment has a downside. Every yeah. single one. Uh, so I'm even more conservative about what I treat at this point. Now that's also a bit riding the tiger. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, one year I'm going to find out I went too far. Well, I had one I didn't treat because it had zero, a uh, zero count, and then I come back and checked them all again, and three months later, and all the rest of them were fine, and that one had like 26. Yeah, it's. it's so I'm like, I should have just treated all of them at the time. Well, you know, if they're not in there when you check it, you have one mite, all of one mite in there. That's it. Just I don't know if I can see that or not. They're, they're hard so. to see. It looks like a little oval yeah. scab at the end. We'll set that aside. We'll pack it back again. Get so, the truck all the way. We've done the wash. We haven't seen the queen. I'm not going to keep looking for her just because you end up hassling the hive. They did not like being breathed on at all. They didn't come off the frame at us, but they definitely did not like being breathed on. They got away from it, didn't they? Yes. Now it seems this hive was set up. I'm going to call that fairly a one and a half because they're starting the top box yeah it was a 1.5 uh and i need to wear the colony still i'll wear the colony with just the bottom half of it okay and that's just because i know that top box is mostly just air and wood i always have the go is to keep double deeps yeah Every year, I say I'm only gonna overwinter in double deep, so no honey supers. Yeah. And then every year, you end up with a honey super, and that's all the honey they got, or you know, you can't take it off when that's all they got. So. I can appreciate people wanting to do it this way or that way, but my apiary, I'll have doubles, I'll have singles. What was this way? I'll have two tall nukes, I'll have three tall nukes, 
Uh, you end up with what you end up with. It's one of those things you're <laughs> going to spend more time trying to get everything the same exact way yeah. if you just ran with it. And all of those can survive. Uh, Megan Milbrath did a thing years ago where she ran a bunch of different colony styles in parallel. And for the most part, the results were indifferent. Like, as long as they had food and yeah. stuff wasn't going sideways, you can get away with a lot of things. I'm going to weigh it in without putting the lid on them. This is just a luggage scale. Oh, yeah? So you just lift up on the back with it? I do it side to side. Do oh, you, do you one you, side and then the other? You want to, however you do it, you want to make sure you're lifting fully on the outside edge. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll, it'll counterbalance itself. Yeah, because it's leaning over more. Like, like I, if I heft it here, the front two inches are going to start counterbalancing. Yeah. Uh, and also, if I measure just one side, 36. A lot of times the two different sides have two different weights because they're skewing honey one way or the other. On one side or the other? Yeah, and this uh, one side was 36 and this side's 34, <laughs> uh, which isn't that much of a difference, but sometimes it'll be 10 pounds. Yeah. So that's 70 pounds as a 1.5 without lid. That, is that a 2 by 4 bottom you built? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's something I made myself. Yeah. Is that is it screened? Yes, it is screened. It, it is. All mine are screened. Okay. So that probably doesn't weigh that much more than a standard bottom. Uh, and without the lid, you're probably, you're probably cruising 80 pounds if the lid yeah. is on that thing. Uh, they're pretty damn close to winter weight. Yeah. yeah. That's what I say. They're getting full for right now. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. They're, they're doing pretty all right. Uh -huh. uh, which uh, I was seeing the same thing in my apiary. And I'm not hearing that from everybody else, but... I've heard a lot of people say they're light, which I don't, I'm not sure why, but... Yeah, well, I mean, there's so many microclimates. Yeah, there is. I think it's it's different for me from being other places. It's different, a little bit different down here because we're in the river bottom. So we have some stuff that other people don't have by being along the river. And... Yeah, well, like uh, everything that blooms now is garbage plants on the edge of the weed line. Uh, wing stems, iron weed if they work it. On sun choke if they work it. Have you, choke, have you seen them working ragweed? They will work ragweed. I've got a ton of ragweed, but I ain't seen them on it yet. The, they take pollen off of it. And I don't think they get anything else, just the pollen. Right. And it kind of slowly eases on there and walk it backwards and hopefully not squish too many. Uh, but that's all they do with it. I've seen them work it. Uh, actually, earlier this year in Chris Ross's age, when they were doing the same stuff there, they were definitely working it at his place, but also there wasn't much else for them to get into. And sometimes that's more of a factor than you realize. Okay, you had this here. 